Today, we're going to be talking about some big performance wins, specifically on BTRFS, the file system, also known as ButterFS, and that's what I'm going to be calling it from now on, or BTreeFS. This wonderful file system that includes the ability to do snapshots has received awesome updates ahead of the 6.16 Linux kernel release. A lot of you ButterFS users are going to be quite excited about this one. Let's jump into some of the latest and greatest wins for this file system. First off, we read here, apart from numerous cleanups, there are some performance improvements and one minor mount option update. There's also one more Radix tree conversion and continued work towards enabling large folios. To get started, we have the extent buffer X array conversion which moving away from old Radix tree metadata to X-Array API yields massive gains in the metadata heavy right back workloads. As it says here in a sample test, it shows a 50% throughput increase and a 33% decrease in the runtime. This is fascinating. Some of you might be asking what extent buffers are. They're internal data structures used by ButterFS to track parts or what's known as extents of files and or metadata. Previously, these buffers were used in a custom implementation, and now they have been converted to X-Array, which is a more efficient and standardized data structure in the Linux kernel designed for indexing and retrieving items quickly, of course, gaining us throughput and minimizing time spent running on the system. This is a fantastic gain, and I'm excited to see this as the next thing we see in performance wins is the extent IO tree cleanups lead to performance improvements by avoiding unnecessary searches or repeated searches. By removing these redundant and or repeated searches, this means that the right back and IO completion pass execute more directly trimming unnecessary lookups, which is great as well. And the extent IO tree is a data structure also used to track which parts of the file or disk block are dirty, meaning modified, that are in use or that are pending IO. This is a critical operation for read and write to know which areas need attention. And then the third performance improvement includes a more efficient extent unpinning. During the transaction commit, freeing, which is known as unpinning here, will free up stale extents and is now leaner, shaving off three to 5% for F sync workloads. Again, another improvement, it's all fantastic to see and what's also fantastic is if you took a moment and subscribe below, YouTube can get finicky and you wouldn't want to miss another update video like this. Also, smash that like button on the way back up. Why do these performance updates matter? Well, now when you create, modify, or delete files, which of course are at the heart of every file system, this is going to cut back on lookup costs and write back overhead. And it directly translates into snappier application behavior, especially under heavy workloads. I'm definitely excited to see these performance updates on ButterFS, but before we get more into depth with these, you might be asking which Linux distributions are using ButterFS. First off, OpenSUSE uses ButterFS in its default subvolumes. By default, OpenSUSE is set up using ButterFS and snapshots for the repartition. Snapshots are allowed to easily roll back your system if needed after applying updates or backup files. Snapshots can be easily managed with Snapper. OpenSUSE, for the most part, has decided to go specifically Leap and Tumbleweed. And as of 2021, one major distribution that has received it is Fedora. The targeted release was Fedora 33 and the proposal here was to make ButterFS the default file system for the desktop variants. For a laptop and workstation installs of Fedora, we want to provide a full system features to users in a transparent fashion. We want to add new features while reducing the amount of expertise needed to deal with situations like running out of disk space. ButterFS is well adapted to this role by design philosophy. Let's make it the default and make it the default they did. As ButterFS, also known as the B-Tree file system, ButterFS is a copy on write file system for Linux aimed at implementing advanced features, including error detection, fault tolerance, recovery, transparent compression, cheap snapshots, integrated value management, and easy administration. It provides multiple device storage pooling, RAID-like features, fast snapshot creation, and checksumming of data and metadata. Contributors include Facebook, Fujitsu, OpenSUSE, Oracle, and Western Digital. BTRFS or ButterFS is licensed under the GPL and open for contribution from anyone. And that's why they made it the default file system on desktop. Starting with Fedora 33, it's fascinating that this storage format and file system has grown quite a lot over the last four or five years, even being provided in mainstream distributions. 
A lot of distributions do offer it, not as default, but of course as a installer option, marked usually as experimental or advanced. Most continue to default to ext4, but over the years, we've seen a change in some Linux distributions going over to the snapshot equivalents for better management of their own file system. Anyways, we're not here to talk about what all distributions have ButterFS, but instead we're talking updates as there are more. Let's talk about the zoned mode. This now introduces sub block groups to allow managing special block groups like the ones for relocation or tree log to handle some corner cases of Eno SPC. And what this means is there are new ways for relocation or the tree log to handle corner cases now for zone devices, think SMR devices, that will prevent Eno SPC glitches. Just to break this down a little bit, zone mode is a special way of managing storage devices like SMR, which are shingled magnetic recording, or ZNS, zone namespaces on SSDs. And all that's special is that these devices require data to be written in a specific sequential way. The issue here being that the file system sometimes needs to relocate data and write tree logs, which are important for metadata or crash recovery. But if the disk is full or almost full, these operations can fail with something called Eno SPC, which is error, no space left on device. Even though that there might be space, it's just not in the right format or location, didn't line up correctly. Therefore, that's why these sub block groups were added, which are special sections within the large block group reserved for critical functions like relocation or tree logs, which will help manage the space more precisely and avoid these edge cases where things get into the Eno SPC. This is fantastic as it covers a big glitch and corner case Moving right along to preparations for large folios, another great thing. Right here, it says, although they're not completely done, but they have made progress, including removing assertions for folio order zero and add support where missing compression, buffered write, defrag, hole punching, subpage, and send. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with folio, a folio is a new way that the Linux kernel decides to group memory pages. For better performance, a large folio means combining multiple pages together into one big unit that can help reduce overhead and improve speeds. So they're working on trying to prepare ButterFS to work with large folios in key areas like compression, buffered write, defrag, hole punching, so on and so forth. These updates to ButterFS support large memory chunks or folios by removing outdated checks and adding missing support for features like mentioned. This is exciting for the future as we are going to see better performance and efficiency once this is completely implemented, but another exciting ButterFS update ahead of the Linux 6.16 kernel release. We also see two other big sections, including admin friendliness, basically how you administer the file system, and another one, which is the future maintenance category. I'm just gonna run through some things here. First off, for admin, we see mount option cleanup, restored scrub reporting, and corrected F-Sync semantics. This is awesome as it clears up mount options and accurate scrub failover reporting, removing gotchas for system administrators, and gives us correct behavior for the F-Sync function, which underpins application guarantees, including databases, transactional stores, and other data storage features. We also see some future maintenance deal including enhanced assert macros with formatted strings for better debug, error handling improvements for things like transaction aborts, move closer to failure sites, avoiding stale states, and massive cleanups, removing unused flags. And this all makes for a leaner, more uniform code base that's just easier to look through. It's safer to continue developing and we get faster progress through big implementations that still need to be created. This all makes for a great update to one of the best Linux file systems out there. ButterFS is now getting even closer to performance parity with some of the other traditional file systems. While strengthening its copy on write and snapshot features, we're getting faster metadata operations, readiness for zoned and huge folio storage, and improve reliability and maintainability. It's definitely making ButterFS a compelling choice for laptops and even massive hyperscale servers. This is all exciting. I wanna keep following the ButterFS updates in the future. And if you do too, make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button for me to get this out to more people. I appreciate you watching this update video to the end. You're a true fan. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. 
Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.